I know there will be a lot that you cannot say, but when we look at this apparent deal that has been brokered, not just with the DOJ, but also the CFTC, what ultimately could this mean for the SEC's case against Binance? Well, Kaylee, it's great to be here. And as you as you guessed, I can't talk about um, ongoing cases, but I will say that um, with all of these cases that, that move forward, we should really be thinking proactively about Building a regulatory framework that would that would work and allow um, companies to do business in the United States, and that's what I'm hoping we can work on in the coming months and years. Okay, so I know you can't speak about this specific case. I just wonder conceptually if you see a world in which someone pleading guilty and potentially stepping down from operation uh, of an exchange could be something of a remedy a remedy to also settle civil charges, or are those just those issues just too separate? Again, it's it's difficult for me. The facts and circumstances of each case are different. Um, there, it is common for. Um, people to deal with criminal the criminal piece uh, first and then deal with the civil piece but you know again it, it depends on each fact on each case and, and the facts and circumstances I understand you can't speak to the specifics of the Binance case but to the extent that you can glean you know what it means for an industry for such a big figure to be pleading guilty to criminal charges you know how does this either set crypto back or help it turn the page how do you view this again I can't comment on the specific news that, that you all just covered, but I can say that we, what we really need to be doing is uh, is to be working proactively to figure out a regulatory framework. And, and I think then we would see um, some of the issues that we've seen in the industry not happening. You know, if, if you try to shut the industry out from access to um, all of the traditional financial rails, then you actually end up with a situation in, in which everyone is worse off. So I hope that we can work on, on um, really doing something that's more productive. Hester, can you bring us inside the dynamic here of the SEC? You know, it's pretty well known that you've really uh, been an advocate of the industry in many ways. The SEC has clearly clamped down uh, left and right when you think about how they have approached exchanges in particular, let alone uh, the listing of digital assets. What is the dynamic? What does the dispute look like inside the agency? Well, Shanali, I, I would take issue with the characterization that I'm an advocate for the industry. What I'm an advocate for is people being able to come into the SEC and figure out which what regulations apply and then comply with those regulations. That's where I think we've fallen down on the job. And I think that's where the where the the conflict has sometimes arisen between me and my colleagues. You know, I think we need to do a better job of, of providing some some guidelines to people. Um, but we all get along very well, and so these are these are um, constant conversations that we're having, and and I hope that we can get to a more, as I said, a more productive place. But it is quite frustrating to a lot of people in the industry, and I share their frustration um, that you know it's one thing to say that there's been a violation; it's a whole other issue to say, okay, now here's here's the framework that you can comply with realistically and you can then avoid future violations. Well, Commissioner, when we're talking about conversations that you are having internally uh, at the SEC, whether it is commissioner to commissioner or chair, commissioner to staff, we have heard a lot of reporting in another matter that has gotten a lot of attention regarding a spot ETF, that there is ongoing conversations between issuers who have filed some of these applications and individuals at the SEC. And I wonder if you can shed any light on how much you as a commissioner might be involved in that or really if this is just happening at the lower uh, staff level at the moment. No, again, I really can't comment on that, but I think I've been very transparent that I've, I've thought for many years now that, that there is no reason for us to stand in the way of a spot Bitcoin exchange traded product. Every one, of course, must be judged on its own unique set of facts and circumstances. But we've had a number come before us where I've said, I don't see the reason that we're denying these. And so I think we, we got a little bit of a nudge from the court, um, and, and we'll see where things go from here. 
And uh, that nudge from the court, I'm guessing you're alluding to the Grayscale case in which they found that the SEC was arbitrary and capricious in uh, denying Grayscale's attempts to convert GPTC into an ETF. There has been a lot of uh, questions, Commissioner, about where exactly Grayscale is going to fall in terms of, of the timeline here. Do you think that would be resolved theoretically before actually one of these other spot filings are, are approved? Or could all of this happen simultaneously? I just, I can't speak to, to that. All of those are under consideration now, so I can't speak to, to them. I'm curious about the path forward, Commissioner, because if we look at uh, the way that the industry has been fighting back against a lot of the cases that the SEC has brought forward, do you think that the agency will continue to have a particularly aggressive posture moving forward with more suits, or do you think that kind of losing some of these cases will take some of the steam off the industry? Well, I will say that, that litigation is not the most effective way to uh, carry out regulation. So certainly enforcement actions are one tool that we have in our toolbox, but we have other tools. And so I think that we should start really thinking about using some of those other tools. Um, now, you know, I haven't noticed a, a, a slowdown necessarily in, in the cases that we've announced. Um, you, you see cases being announced. so. I think we're still on an enforcement track, but I'm still trying to urge us to, to try to take a more productive approach. When does that happen? Do you think that it would only come under a change in regime, or do you think that this could happen under the Gensler administration? Well, I think one thing that could really change things is Congress. Um, of course, Congress has been quite interested in these topics, and so Congress weighing in would certainly affect uh, the way we, we move forward. But realistically, I mean, any any... Uh, any of us could get up tomorrow and 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 say we're we're going to try to take a different approach. We need to have three of us agreeing on that. But if we did, I, I think we could um, we could turn things around more quickly. Do you get a sense, Commissioner, that there is a a third that may be willing to join you? Is there is there a real shift in the mood music at the SEC, if you will? Again, it's hard for me to see that from from uh, what what we've been doing publicly, but I'm always hopeful. Well, fair enough. Hope uh, is, is a certain kind of strategy. You mentioned that uh, Congress doing something would be quite helpful here. Of course, we have seen some moves in that regard. The Financial Services Committee in the House did pass some market structure uh, legislation this summer that has yet to proceed forward. I wonder what your thought is on that kind of legislation, the delineation it makes between the authorities of, of your agency, the SEC, and the CFTC, or whether there should be changes to that. Look, I think Congress is, is the right body to be making these kinds of decisions. It's ultimately they who are directly accountable to the American people, and so they're the right ones to decide. I think that there are ways that we could work together with the CFTC. We do it all the time in other areas, and I think we can do it in this area as well. But ultimately, it's, it's up to Congress to decide which pieces need to go where. And doing that is not is not easy because crypto is is not just financial. It, it it could have a lot of implications for different areas of our lives as well. And so they're undertaking a big job in, in trying to draft this legislation. Commissioner, how does the crypto community think about the SEC's agenda ahead? On one hand, there are these enforcement actions. On the other hand, you do have a very busy agenda outside of the crypto industry as well. There are these ETFs in the pipeline. What can investors expect moving forward in terms of the order of priorities? Well, I think you're correct in pointing to the rest of the agenda as being um, as being really important here. The, the commission is is really the busiest that it's been uh, in my memory. We're we're working on many many rules, most of which have nothing to do with crypto, and we also have a very busy enforcement calendar. And so, I think that given all of the priorities that we have. Um, I think that means that crypto doesn't necessarily get a slot on the rulemaking agenda as we've as we've seen. And where it does, frankly, it's it it doesn't look great. Um, some of the some of the initial steps that we've taken with respect to regulating crypto have said either you have to centralize, you have to get out of the US, or you have to shut down. Those are not great options and they totally undermine the whole point of 
crypto, which is to facilitate decentralization, which then can make for a more robust financial system and, and other parts of, of the, the economy as well can be decentralized. And that's the strength and, and the, the, the transparency that comes with, um, with not relying on centralized entities and the um, you know, equal terms of access that apply to everyone. These are really valuable things. And if you force centralization, there are some points where there will be centralization, of course, but just forcing that is is not uh, it, it's missing out on the point.